The Earth Human Speaks of a Love That He Does Not Know. March 2006 A compilation of Maya slash Pliaran excerpts on love by Gaiagis Vivian Leg. Reverence, human of the earth is the fundamental element of all existence, so it is therefore also the fundamental element of love itself which is built on this all-embracing reverence. And since this is so in truth, it is also an impossible thing that love, once awakened and built up in truthfulness, can ever weaken again and become cold, or could transform into hate or be annihilated. Billy Meyer, in his book, Law of Love. In the renewed teachings provided by Billy Edward Albert Meyer and his Pleiaran extraterrestrial helpers and teachers, we are repeatedly faced with the words knowledge, wisdom, truth, logic, spirit, and cognition. Especially the importance of truth, knowledge and wisdom is stressed. Truth. Knowledge. Wisdom. This is very striking to me coming from a Christian background. Samyaza's introduction to the spiritual teachings reiterates these concepts over and over. 51. Wisdom is a distinguishing feature of creation that, as a fragment, inhabits the human as spirit. 52. Therefore, the human shall increase his knowledgeable wisdom and he will recognize creation. 53. He shall increase his search for truth and he shall know about the power of wisdom. 54. Cognition of the truth brings liberation from all restrictions. 55. It brings boundless knowledge and wisdom. The same is also stressed in the original unfalsified teachings of Ye Manuel, relayed in the text, Talmud Ye Manuel, discovered in the actual burial cave of Ye Manuel by Billy Meyer in 1963. Aware that some Christians or people with Christian backgrounds dismiss the original teachings of Ye Manuel as lacking the Christian love ethic, or even misinterpret them as being full of hate. Because of Ye Manuel's strident criticism and identification of falsifiers and other wrongdoers, I have been very conscious of how the concept of love is dealt with in these teachings overall. A clear example is provided in Talmud Ye Manuel where a Pharisee asks, Ye Manuel, which is the foremost commandment in the law? Christians expect to find, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But instead Ye Manuel says, the highest directive in the law of creation is this achieve the wisdom of knowledge, so that you may wisely follow the laws of creation. This is no denial of the importance of love. Ye Manuel was telling the people how to come to experience love. Semyaza's teaching continues. 56. Wisdom is a powerful means to recognize the laws of creation. 57. A human who is filled with love is also rich in wisdom, and a human who is rich in wisdom is also full of love. In no way is love absent or of secondary importance in these teachings. The following is from Billy Meyer's book Arahat Athasatha, in which he relays to us the message of the, we form, called Arahat Athasatha, which is beyond space and time, and which, we are told, relayed this teaching also to Ye Manuel around 2000 years ago. 733. The law of love is the basic law of all creational laws, and this law also embodies the basic law for you earth people. 734. Who therefore does not exercise universal love to all offends against a directive of the order and against a law of the determination. Rather than this emphasis on truth, knowledge and wisdom being a denial of the importance of love it is, in reality, entirely the opposite. The renewed teachings lay the necessary foundation for the true understanding and development of love, a foundation which is not provided at all by Christianity. Despite the repeated Christian teaching about God's love, love for neighbors, love for enemies, and so on, the requisite understanding and reverence is denied followers, not only with the omission of teachings about the necessary acquisition of knowledge, wisdom and reason, but with the active discouragement of these things through the requirement, instead, for complete faith and trust in God through which all problems would be solved. But how does Billy Meyer define love? In Law of Love, he tells us repeatedly, 
love is the absolute certainty that one lives with and coexists with everything, thus, in everything which exists in fauna and flora, in the fellow humans, in every material and spiritual life form, no matter which kind, and in the existence of the entire universe and beyond. Love in its essential definition therefore means a feeling of absolute certainty that one lives together with all that exists in absolute certainty and in the absolute feeling of this that the existence of the other is a part existence of one's own existence no matter whether it deals with a plant, a spirit form an animal, a planet, a stone or a fellow human. Love is the absolute certainty and the absolute knowledge and the absolute feeling and comprehension that all life is a fragment of one's own life, because everything together is an entire we form in the eternal being of all existence, and only may exist in the knowledge and perception of love as the entire existence. Love, therefore, is the absolute knowledge and feeling, the absolute perception and empathy in communion in original form with all existing life in all the entire universal forms and beyond, in the absolute wisdom of this that one's own existence is also a part existence of every other existing life form, which is, however, just as much a fragment of one's own existence, and that, collectively, entire universal life forms only therefore exist because that truly is so. This understanding is expressed in the Talmud Yimanuel. Yet there are teachings in it which are interpreted by Christians as being, full of hate. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you exercise justice according to the natural law of creation, so that you find the verdict in logic. Offer your love wherever it is warranted, and punish wherever, the law of nature demands punishment. 539-41 As Talmud Emanuel scholar, Jim Dedorf, confirms for critics, indeed, there is no TJ verse ordering one to love one's enemies, or to turn one's other cheek to an abuser in order to receive more unwarranted punishment. Nowhere in the spiritual teachings of Billy Meyer and the Pliaran are we directed to submit to the unrighteous behavior of others. Instead we are admonished to punish unrighteousness and to learn to become wise and judge what is good and what is bad. But we are equally sternly directed to exercise humanity, reason and love and not to condemn or be hypocritical. There is a section in O.M., the newly delivered book of the teachings of the truth from this source, about loving our enemies. It should be remembered that the Talmud Yimanuel, as we know it, represents only a quarter of the original text of Emmanuel's life and teaching, which was discovered by Maya in the tomb in Jerusalem. Meanwhile O.M. is the complete teaching provided for the earth human again, this time by the very advanced human extraterrestrial Ishwish Patar and his prophet. Its teachings are consistent with, and indeed contain more complete versions of the lessons taught by Yimanuel, as were translated from the original text of the Talmud Yimanuel. In the following the Ishwish is speaking to the Prophet. Kanan 20, 158. And speak instructively to the people do not revile your friends, and do not revile your enemies and do not revile the righteous and not the unrighteous because they are altogether creatures of creation. 159. Bring love to enemies, as to friends, and bring love to the unrighteous as to the righteous, yet be vigilant and protect yourselves from the falseness and the lies and deceit of the enemies and the unrighteous, so that you do not suffer damage through them. 160. If there is an enemy or an unrighteous one, so are they humans like you, so you should think and behave about them and with them and for them as people, and therefore in love, even if you are directed to be vigilant so that you do not suffer damage if they secretly want to bring you damage and falseness and lies and deceit. 161. Be friendly and loving and humane to enemies and unrighteous ones, and give them shelter, food and drink and everything necessary, and offer them appropriate honor and respect, because they are human, as also you are human, and you are all creatures of the same creation, thus the righteous as well as the unrighteous. There is certainly no teaching in O.M. about turning the other cheek. After all, love is based on wisdom. We are also taught to judge not condemn, but judge correctly and justly using logic. 
Christians seem to forget Emmanuel's broadside against the scribes and Pharisees in their Bible which still reflects the heat of the original unfalsified version, if not the complete meaning, which includes condemnation of their falsification of the truth. Logic tells us that it is correct, for example to despise the abuse of children or the falsification of truth. Love does not mean that we agree and approve of the behavior of others rather that we understand it and revere all life, and thus respond appropriately. Love depends on reverence for all life. There is much emphasis in these teachings placed on paying attention to nature and thereby learning to revere it, and thereby to revere all manifestations of creation. With the help of these teachings we can at last come to understand what love is. And we can now understand what was truly meant by, love your neighbor as you love yourself. One of the prophet Emmanuel's teachings which survived the falsification process. In Law of Love, our prophet says, Love your neighbor as you love yourself means, in the explanation of this directive, that you, earth human, as also any other human or non-human life form in the entire existence of the universe, should love your neighbor in cognition and obedience to the law of love, so therefore in accordance with the law love is the absolute certainty that one lives with and coexists with everything, thus, in everything which exists in fauna and flora, in the fellow humans, in every material and spiritual life form, no matter which kind, and in the existence of the entire universe and beyond. He also explains. Love, human of the earth is the first and last law of all being, therefore of life, altogether. Without love no creation may form and without love no transformation may be completed. Love is required for all changes of life, for being and not being, for light and darkness, for the coming and the passing away, for life and death, for everything in everything, and for everything in the existence altogether. And from Arahat Athasatha, in regard to the new age, which is characterized by great upheaval. 742. More than ever the highest directive of the hour has become to exercise selfless, true love. 743. All thoughts, deeds and behavior must be raised from true love. 743. All thoughts, deeds and behavior must be raised from true love. And finally, for this collection, again from law of love. Love, therefore, is the absolute wise comprehension, understanding, cognition, knowledge, ability, mastering and logic and certainty, as well as the feelings and feeling, and the absolute perception of one's own co-life in the life of the neighbor and in all else that exists, as a factor of the communion, in original form with all existing life in all entire universal forms and beyond in the absolute wisdom of this that one's own existence is also a part existence of any other existing life form, which is however, just as exactly a fragment of one's own existence, and that collectively the entire universal life forms, of every kind and form, only exist because it truly is so that everything and anything is bound together in love and forms one entire universal oneness. The End